everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 11 build 25992. This build includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last however many builds it's been since we last did <laughs> a build video. It's been a few months, uh, but that's Microsoft's fault. They were being boring, but it's okay. They're being exciting again, or at least they're starting to be. Uh, we're now moving into that next phase of development. There's a new version of Windows coming in 2024. And so the Insider builds are expected to start getting a little bit more interesting again as we lead into the new year, which is uh, super cool. So let's start with build 25992 and the changes uh, added to this build. Uh, if we go into the file explorer here and go to an area where we have some files, starting with this build, you can create more archive formats. So earlier this year, Microsoft added the ability to extract additional archive formats. Originally, it was just zip files. You can now extract seven zip files, RAR files, TAR files uh, in the production build of Windows. But starting with this insider build, you can now create those archive formats as well. So if I select these two files here and right click, we can go down to this new menu called Compress 2. And you can see we have the option of set, uh, a zip file, which is your standard Windows zip file that you've always been able to create in Windows. But now the option of a 7-zip file and a TAR file as well. So you no longer need to go and download 7-zip or a program that can handle TAR files to create those formats. You can simply just do it straight through Windows. I don't have 7 zip installed here but if I select 7z or 7z uh, it's going to create one for me and I can call that test and I now have a 7zip format here uh, which I can then select and extract using Windows's built-in extraction tool because as I mentioned Windows now also supports extracting these formats as well. So that's pretty cool to see. Uh, there are no dedicated options for this. So you can't change things like compression ratio at least not currently. Maybe that'll be added in the future but for now it's just a simple button which allows you to create a 7-zip or a tar file in addition to zip files which is pretty cool. Moving right along, the next notable change with this release is an update to the Snap Layouts feature. This technically isn't new. They announced this a few months back, but they pulled it from the builds because it was buggy or something. I don't know. But it's back again, and it's the ability for Windows to sort of smartly, uh, using machine learning or AI or who knows these days, it's using something to suggest uh, layouts for you. So in addition to the usual four you get, or six, uh, depending on... Um, screen size, you now have an ad additional row down here, which is full of suggested apps. So as you can see, I have three apps open. And so it's assuming if I wanted to snap all three in a grid, it would be like this. So if I select that, all three of those apps will snap automatically. Previously, you'd have to manually move these into the areas you want them, but that's not the case anymore. If you have multiple open, so to my knowledge, this is supposed to sort of learn your workflow. So if you're constantly snapping the Microsoft Store with another app, for example, when you do go to the snap layout here and that other app is open, if you, for example, here it's looking at Edge. Let's assume I'm always snapping the Microsoft Store with Edge because it's noticed that you most of the time are always snapping those two apps side by side. So you can just click that one button and it will bring those two apps forward for you. And of course you saw there with the three grid layout, maybe there's three apps you like to run side by side. So Edge, Microsoft Store and Notepad. And it's gonna do it like so. So that's a nice addition to the Windows Snap Layouts feature. Uh, I don't think it shows up at the top here. Oh, it does, okay. So you can actually navigate through to this UI as well and uh, do the same sort of smart snapping feature if you'd like, which is pretty cool. Okay, moving on, let's now take a look at a feature that's technically not new in this build, but since we've not done a video in a while, I figured I'd show it off anyway. And that, of course, is the updated uh, quick settings layout, which um, is barely updated. I mean, it looks identical, more or less. The, they've removed the edit button, and that's because all of your quick settings are now available in a sort of scroll menu versus only having six of them and then adding more if you want them. They're all here now and you can see there's a little sort of button which allows you to switch between the pages or you can use your scroll wheel or a trackpad to do that as well. As I mentioned, there's no longer an edit button to move these around, you just simply drag and drop. So if you want to put that there, you can. If you want to put that up there, you can. Um, Sadly, you can't show more than two rows at a time, at least not currently. Maybe they'll add that in the future. But right now, as you can see, it's only two rows. And if you want to go to the rest of them, you just have to scroll to get to the um, other layer. So there you are. Now, another change I've noticed, if we jump into the settings app here and go down to um, the power and battery area, this layout here has been updated and a few additional things have been added to it. So you can now control things like lid and power button controls straight through the modern interface. To my knowledge, previously you could only still customize this through the legacy control panel, but it looks like they're moving more and more into the modern settings app here. So you can now change what um, 
pressing the power button on your PC does. By default, it's set to sleep. You can set it to hibernate, shut down, or just turn the display off, or do nothing if you'd rather that. And same goes for the lid, a number of different options there as well. Uh, you've still got your battery usage up here and stuff. Oh, let's find that like so. And that grid still works as you would expect. Uh, there's screen sleep and hibernate timeouts here. So previously, I think you could only customize uh, turning screen off and putting device to sleep. But now there's an option to enable hibernation as well or, or, or configure when hibernate kicks in. Windows has always put your PC into hibernation, but you can now through this interface configure um, when that happens. Or you can set it to never so your PC will only remain asleep and likely drain your, its battery faster while it is in that state. Okay, the last feature I want to quickly highlight, this technically hasn't been announced yet, but it's quite clear Microsoft is at the very least considering it and testing it secretly internally. Uh, and that's a different position for the Copilot button. Normally it's here alongside your other system buttons such as Task View and whatnot. But with this setting enabled, it's now over here in the system tray. Uh, so clicking on it obviously works as you would expect. It brings out the Copilot sidebar. And there's also a nice animation to it as well when you're clicking it now, which is pretty nice. Um, but that's basically the only change. Uh, it shifts over the system tray and, and the date and time and stuff here ever so slightly. Um, and I kind of see what they're going for here. If you think about how the button on the left here opens up a pane that slides out from the left, uh, it would make sense for Copilot to be on the right because it's a pane that slides out from the right, right? So I think that's kind of what they're thinking about here and, and, and that's where their logic comes from. However, I really don't like how <laughs> this looks currently. They, they need to update the design of this at the very least for this button to make sense where it is. Um, but yes, uh, I guess we'll see where that where they where they head with that. Like I said, it's not technically been announced yet, so there's plenty of time for them to polish this up and change the layout and stuff. Uh, but yes, so there you are. That's a quick look at Windows 11 build 25992. Thank you so much for watching. We shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.